because he's worthy. Because he that is mighty hath done to me great things. And holy is his name. Sing glory to his name. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, as we so humbly approach your holy throne of grace, O oh God. Father, thanking you and praising you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you have plans to do. Father, you are the great I am, and beside thee there is none other. Father, you thought so much of us that you took time out of your busy schedule, and you saw fit to woke us up this morning, O oh God, Father, and clothed us in our right mind. For that, we can say thank you. Father, we thank you for our reasonable uh, portion of our health, our strength, our food, our shelter, and our clothing, O oh God. Father, we thank you for being better to us than we've been to our own selves. Father, we thank you for our good times as well as our bad times. We thank you, O oh God, for our upsettings as well as our downsettings. Father, we thank you for this being the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we pray right now in a special manner that you might remember our dear pastor. Father, while he's lying on his bed of affliction, O oh God, Father, touch his body from the crown of his head all the way down to the sole of his feet. Let him know, O oh God, Father, that somebody prayed for him, had him on their time, on their mind, and took the time and prayed for him. Father, we pray that you might keep the testimony in his mouth that there still is power in the almighty living God. Father, remember your word as it goes for today, that it might go from breast to breast, that it might go from heart to heart, that it might go from the east coast all the way to the west coast, oh God, Father, that you might be the one that gets all of the glory, that you might be the one that gets all of the honor, and that you might be the one that gets all of the praise in our lives. Father, this is our desire and prayer this hour, and we will be very careful not to forget to give thy name and praise. Let the church say together, amen. Man, we thank God truly for all things great and small. For as we said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter if the sky is cloudy outside, maybe drizzling a little bit. But this is the day that the Lord hath made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because you or I don't know if we're going to get another opportunity to praise God. We could leave from this place and God forbid something happened. And we chose not to praise God's name. There goes our opportunity. Songwriter said, while the blood is running warm in your vein, you've got to get right and praise God's name. Because you never know when your last day, you never know when your last hour, you never know when your last minute or even second may be. So while you have breath in your nostrils, use it to praise God's name. We thank God truly for that. We thank God truly for his God's only begotten son, Jesus, whom he sent down to die one day on that cruel cross of Calvary so that man, woman, boy, and girl might have a right to make it into the kingdom of heaven. We thank God truly for the late elder and sister Lightfoot, Solomon Mishaw. We thank God truly for their preachings and their teachings, for the, the wisdom that they left behind the knowledge of God's word. We thank God for our present leadership, Elder Howard, and truly the shepherd that he is unto the flock. We thank God truly for the, the saints of the Most High, the ministers of the gospel, the deacons of the church. We say unto you all, good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God for the scroll that reads obedience, love, love. Is that what that second one says? Love, reverence. Some may say they saved the best for last. Respect. Respect. If you want respect, you got to give respect. Don't be acting disrespectful to somebody and then turn around and expect them to act respectful to you. 
even if they do act respectful to you. If you act in disrespectful to them, don't be expecting them, well, you still got to treat me with respect. You supposed to be a child of God. Yeah, they're supposed to treat you with respect. But just because they're a child of God don't give you any right to treat them disrespectful. Amen? Amen. Obedience, love, reverence, and respect to this first to God and then to leadership and then to one another. We thank God truly for his blessings, great and small. Thank God truly for uh, my beautiful wife. I thank God for our children that he's blessed us with. Thank God for the jobs, the gifts and talents, house, car, all of God's many, many blessings, the great as well as the small. Thank God truly for all of you all pressing your way out, for seeing the different ones that we might not have seen in a while. Thank God for the Sparks from the Anvil, which is found on page number three in your programs. The first one says, the Lord won't take a chew of tobacco from your mouth, but he will take away the appetite if you will keep the tobacco out of your mouth. If you keep the tobacco out of your mouth. Don't be trying to tempt the Lord. Well, I know the Lord, when he's ready for me to stop, he's going to take it out of my mouth. No. If you keep it out your mouth, God will take that appetite from your mouth. But you got to keep it out your mouth. Number two says, anything you give most of your attention to over God is an idol. It doesn't matter what it is, and we can go through the list. It could be husband or wife. It could be your job. It could be your car. In some people's cases, it could even be your bed. There's some people that prefer to lie in bed feeling just as good as can be. But lying in bed, I don't feel like going to church today. I'm going to sleep in and watch the game. Anything that you put above God is an idol. Number three says, if you entertain sympathy for wrong, wrong will, without a shadow of a doubt, overtake you. Sympathize. If you are sympathizing with wrongdoing, wrong will overtake you. Scripture says that the Lord is angry with the, the wicked. How often? Every day. Every day. It didn't say just during the week, Monday through Friday, excluding Saturday and Sunday. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Every day, the Lord is angry with the wicked. On the reverse side, it says, when a man and a woman come to the conclusion to divorce each other, they are to remain unmarried or be reconciled one to the other. Excuse me, because fornication is the only cause that Jesus Christ set forth as grounds for such. All other reasons causeth a continuous act of adultery. To he, she, and all other who marries the two of them. Amen? Amen. Scripture teaches us that what God has joined together, what God has joined together, don't let no man separate it and put aside, put asunder what God has joined together. And we thank God truly for that. We thank God truly for all of you all pressing your way out on this pastor's Sunday, first Sunday of the month. Asking God that he might remember our dear pastor. Got back last week and wasn't feeling too well. I understand why he was out in California and then came back and still wasn't feeling too well, so continue to keep him in your prayers. Amen? Thank God truly for his, as we said, his blessings, great and small, truly God being better to us than we have been to our own selves. For a thought this afternoon, deacon, congregation, 